Hello class, how are you all doing? I hope you are all doing great at home and you are keeping yourself safe as well. So I welcome you to grade 6 officially, okay? We have to start something on our curriculum so that when we come back to school, we will not lag behind, okay? So we are going to treat something under visual arts. As usual, you know, creative art is made up of visual arts and what performing arts. But we are going to start our topic today on visual arts and the thinking, exploring, thinking and exploring ideas. Okay, we are going to learn about a visual art called Meshach Asari. Okay, so I'm going to give you a brief introduction of some of the visual artists that we'll be studying about whilst we are in grade six. Okay. So today we are going to learn a brief history of Meshach Asari, learn about the inspirations and themes of his artworks, and learn about the contributions of his artworks to development in art. Okay, so let's quickly move to our first slide and then start our lesson. Great class, so let's begin our lesson. So we are going to talk about art and some of the visual artists in Ghana and abroad, okay? So art can represent the ways in which people view their personal identity. Contemporary international visual artists. So when we say contemporary international visual artists, it means contemporary artists simply means art of today. People who do art that links to things that are happening around us today, okay, not in the past. Okay. So contemporary international visual artists based in Ghana or abroad use their artistic traditions and experiences to comment on identity, society and the world at large. So they use art to talk about either their identity or the identity of a group of people. Your identity simply means where you belong to. Okay, so let's say your 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 uh, school ID card makes somebody know that you are a student of Silicon Valley International. Okay. So they use art to express some of these things, either based on the identity. Let's say the artist is a Ghanaian. He will use art to express some of the things that identifies us as Ghanaians to the, to the world. And even in our society, let's say for instance, we are in the political season. We can use art to talk about politics and the nature of politics in Ghana. Okay, and let's say worldwide, like this coronavirus that has hit the whole world, they can use art to express themselves just for others to know what is going on about the coronavirus okay so that's what mostly artists do they use the art to express themselves about either identity society or the world okay anything that is happening around these particular things they express themselves with art you see so art can also be a record of human experience and differences in style among different artists which can be associated with specific reason intent or motivation like I explained earlier okay so they use art to express themselves in a lot of ways okay according to how they want to the style they want to go okay so according to every artist and how he or she expresses himself artistically okay so there are many international visual artists who have been recognized internationally because of their great works okay so an artist your works must be great and they must be unique that's how they will be identified by other people and you can go international okay so some of these visual artists are meshaka sari as i said earlier we are going to learn about him today zingaru leonardo michalino picasso el anatu kala uh, karawalka sorry ibrahim mahama rebecca horn and many others so we are going to learn about most of these people while we are in grade six but today we are going to talk about meshaka sari and his artworks in this lesson okay so let's move to our first slide and then look at the brief history of meshak asari okay great class so let's look at the brief history of meshak asari so meshak asari was born 18 september 1945 in nyankumase Yankopasi is in Ghana, okay. His mother Agata Adoma Afam was a trader, just like a normal trader in the market. And his father Joseph K. Asari was an accountant, just like an just like a normal accountant that we all know. Okay. He studied fine arts at the College of Arts at the University of Science and Technology in Kumasi and became a teacher. Okay. So he became a teacher like I'm just I'm teaching you right now, okay. And through that he got this inspiration to become an author so he was then asked to illustrate children's book written by a friend now that i'm able to draw 
How about also writing, as Sari said, and this led to him becoming an author and illustrator of children's storybook. So guess where all the inspiration came from? His friend wrote a storybook and he was like, since you are the artist, why don't you do the pictures for me or add illustrations to the story for me? So illustrations are just pictures, okay? So he wanted Meshach to add the pictures to the story. And Meshach did that and he saw that it was nice. And through that, he also drew the inspiration to become an author, to write storybooks and do the illustrations himself. And that became a great profession for him through which he won many awards internationally and also in Ghana. Okay, so don't let anything stop you from becoming an artist. Okay, during this time, he began to write and illustrate children's books, including the much translated Tavia Goes to Sea. You see, because he's a Ghanaian, he used the name Tavia, okay, which received the Ghana National Book Award and the UNESCO. Okay, UNESCO simply means United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization. So the UNESCO gave him a citation which read best picture book from africa imagine you're an artist and then you win this award from unesco that would be a great feeling right okay so this is one of this are some of the awards that meshak won through his storybooks okay so after a period of 10 years during which he did not publish any work meshak asari returned to ghana in 1981 with a new book the brass man's secret Remember, he's an author and an illustrator. So he writes children's storybook and he does the illustration. He does the pictures in the storybook himself. Okay, so he came out with this other storybook called The Brass Man's Secret. Okay, which he did the writing and the drawings in it, which was translated into many languages because it was a very nice story. And it won the Norma Award. And Norma Award is one of the major awards organized in Africa. Okay, so imagine him getting this award as well in 1982. So it was the best book published in Africa in the preceding year. So he won the award many times. Okay, so this is a little history about Meshaka Sari. Let's move to the next slide and continue. So let's continue with the history of Meshaka Sari. Many further successes followed. You remember the awards that he got in our previous slide. In 1984, Asari's Cat in Search of a Friend, that's also another storybook that he wrote, okay, won the Austrian National Prize and the Babe Golden Plate at the Brett Slither Biennale, okay, in 1995. So these are all international awards that he got out of writing and illustrating his own storybooks for children, okay. So you can become a great story writer but you can also do your own illustrations in your storybooks and guess what it can be international it can be a great person more greater than Mr. Kasari was okay okay so he also had his master's degree in social anthropology at the university of london school of oriental and african studies okay so he continued with the art and since 1993 he was based in london while frequently traveling throughout africa looking to experience as many african cultures as possible so as to represent them in his works so since he's an author he traveled to many african countries just to study their culture and their way of life so that he can get inspiration to write more storybooks to be able to publish them okay and be able to also illustrate them for others to buy and for him to continue to be one of the greatest artists okay so his book Sosu score was the winner of the 1999 UNESCO First Prize for Children's and Young People's Literature in the Service of Tolerance. Okay, so you can see that he won a lot of awards based on the books he wrote, okay, and how inspirational and how influential his books also were in the lives of those who read it. Okay, so you can become a great story writer and also be an illustrator as well make sure your books make great impact in the lives of those who read it okay so let's go to the next slide and find out some of the titles of his artworks and some of the pictures that he used okay all right so just as meshak was a great author he had great titles to his books okay like tavia goes to see 
when you hear Tavia Cruz to see it's simply telling you about the beach side or the fishermen in Ghana okay and about a little boy who went to see with his uncle for the first time okay so most of the inspirations were about was about the culture and the lifestyle of people around him within Africa within Ghana okay most of his titles were based on those inspirations and the things that he got from the lifestyle of the people so let's look at some inspirations and themes of Meshach Meshach's artworks okay so the title of the book Teria goes to see was inspired by the fishing activities on the beaches of Accra. On the beach, on these beaches, he admired the tough, simple, hard-working gun fishermen. So he spent enough time with them just to study them. Okay, like I explained earlier, just to get the title or the inspiration to write his books, he had to go to this fishermen at the beach and then study their way of life, study how they go to the sea to fish, and he was able to come up with a story. Syria goes to sea. Okay, so let's go to the next one. The canoe story is also about the transformation of a great, a giant tree from the Ashanti forest into a much loved fishing canoe in Accra. So this also talks about how canoes are made. Okay, he was able to go there and study how they cut the big timbers and then mold them and then carve them into uh, canoes. That's how come he derived the inspiration to write what the canoe story. Okay, so that's most of the time how he gets his inspiration. He goes to the field, goes and finds out how the actual thing is done. And through that, he's able to give a good account through the stories that he writes. Also, the book Outside Accra does an outside exit. The story was inspired by how Accra radiates all directions through what used to be discrete towns, villages, and settlements that are now interconnected by youth okay so like just how Accra started from villages from different different people coming to settle in Accra and how today it has become one of the great cities in the world okay so through that he gets his inspiration to write the book titled outside Accra does an outside exit so you can see most of his inspirations were through the lifestyle of the people he studied them drew the inspiration and wrote the stories accordingly okay so let's move to the next slide and look at some of the titles and some of the pictures that he drew for his storybooks okay awesome great class so now let's look at some of the titles of mr kasari's artworks okay he was an author who usually writes stories for children okay so you can see most of his stories have children in the child illustrations in them okay so he did the writing himself and he did the drawings in the storybooks to himself one will ask how does he draw the, the stories or the pictures in the storybooks he draws them later scans them then uploads them onto the pages that he writes that's when the editing of the book is being done eventually we learn how to do this and then we'll do some okay so now let's look at the first title the first title is what Norma's Sand okay so Norma's Sand is a story about a, a, a land called Lesotho I hope you know a country called what Lesotho is a landlocked country in South Africa so it's about a ruthless money lender who comes to claim back money borrowed by Norma's father from the family who knew nothing of his debt first he took the family's cow which was the sole income for the family. Then now he wanted to take Norma's son. And Norma also wanted to retaliate by fighting with him. So it goes on and on and on and on and on. So that's the story about Norma's son. You can see the title and the image of the girl pouring sun onto the floor. Then the second one is what? Sosu's call. So the story about Sosu is that Sosu was a young disabled boy who always dreamed of going to school seeing children go to school up and down because he couldn't work he was always by the roadside okay so one day it's like the whole village town people everybody went about his normal duties and then he sounded the gong that he's beating to call most of the villagers back because the sea was about to sweep the whole village away so based on his heroic uh, sound which called all the people back to the village the village was saved okay and in his reward they gave him a wheelchair that gave him the opportunity to go to school 
So that's a story about Susu Scope. Okay, that's a, just a quick summary about it. Then we have the chipo and the bed on the hill. So this is about these two young people who were told about their ancestors. How a bed led them to the hills so that they were able to find their way. So when they heard the story, they were like, they want to find that particular bed. So they stopped everything they were doing and they also went down the hill just to look for that bed. Okay, so that's the main summary of what Chipo and the black bed on the hill talks about. Okay, then we come to the magic goat. The magic goat is mainly about the uh, story about the two kingdoms. That's the human kingdom and the animal kingdom. And here we have the kingdom between the goat and the sheep who came to realize that aside them there are other animals but the other animals some are also what greedy so that goes on and on and on then we have kojo and the brass man's secret so here kojo's father is a brass man is somebody who makes designs out of brass okay when we talk of brass you're talking about for a typical example is the simba bells that the drummers use when they are hitting the drum they go and hit that one pinch okay so that's the simba bell that's made of brass okay so kojo's father made a very nice image for him okay out of brass and then that brass he made, he built a, a drama for him okay using the brass and that brass turned into came alive and took kojo into a land called the proverbs and riddles okay that one also goes on and on and on so these are some of the titles of mesha kastari's uh, story books you can google online and read about them and when you look at the pictures critically they were drawn and painted by him okay so this makes his pictures or his stories look so natural when you look at the pictures it even explains to you and gives you the desire to go and look and read more about what the title is talking about okay okay we've come to the end of our lesson today god willing next we are going to learn some of the cultural influences of mesha kasari's artwork in art okay and we are going to try and do an artwork just like mesha kasari take good care of yourself stay home and be safe bye bye